Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I'm your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and on this show we're going to be introducing you to Get Gooey. So sit back and let the knowledge flow in, because SE Geek begins now. Okay, in this tutorial, as I promised in an earlier tutorial, um, we're going to be talking about Git GUI in a much more detail and showing you, you know, how to do commits in a much easier way than just through the command line manipulates, uh, you know, how you do commits. And we're going to be using Git GUI to do that. So uh, first, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to one of our test files. Uh, actually, let's go with test two. And oops, I didn't want to get. I wanted to jedit that, so we're editing it, and we're going to add, you know, just some text here. Four, five, and we'll just save that off. Now what I'm going to do, instead of committing, I'm going to do get GUI. And this brings up get GUI, which I showed you just briefly before. Now, as you can see here, we have unstage changes and stage changes. So it gives you, you know, a way to see, you know, the difference between what's been staged and what's not been, which you can't really, you know, see through the command line except for with between statuses. And when I click on an individual file, which, you know, I only have one here, uh, when I click on the text of the file, I should say, when you click on the icon, it'll actually stage or unstage the file. So if I click that, it actually staged it. Or if I click the icon again, it'll unstage it. But if I click on the text of the file, I can see a quick little diff of what changed in that file. Now from here, one of the very nice things that you can do with Get GUI that you can't you can do on the command line, but don't ask me how to actually do this because it you know it'd be a very complex you know command which would be very long to type out. So, but within here, say I only wanted to commit you know say just these two lines, I could you know highlight them and I could stage um, let's see stage lines for commit. So now what that did was this broke that into two things. So now I have those two lines, and I'm going to say, you know, for my commit message, first lines. And I'm going to commit those. So now those two lines are committed, and, you know, into the repository, and I have now these three other lines. Well, say I wanted to, you know, stage this line and this line, two lines that aren't in line with each other and not the fourth line. It'll actually do that and I can, you know, add last lines, do a commit, and then I can go back up here and say, you know, stage the whole file this time, missed four. So, and I could commit that. Now, everything's committed. So let's close this and just go to get K for just a quick moment. And I can see, you know, the, you know, differences of when I added those. The first one, you know, when I added those two lines, and when I added my missing fourth line. So all that got committed. All right. So, now I want to do, uh, let's do, edit that file again, test, and we'll go down here and we'll add six, seven, eight, Just some more lines, and we'll go back to git GUI again. So now we have these other lines, and I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. I'm going to um, stage that line, 
I'm going to stage this line, adding more lines, and I'm going to commit that. And it's like, oh crap, I forgot to add 7. I forgot about it. Not a problem, actually. Because if you notice, there's this little thing called new commit and amend last commit. So if I click amend mass last commit, it'll bring that commit back, and I can actually edit it, adding that last line, and commit it. Now there is a caveat to this. Now, which uh, I will be talking about pushing like uh, to a central repository later. But the thing is, you never want to amend a commit that you've already pushed or published to a central repository because you'll get into uh, merge conflict troubles later on. So if you pushed a commit out, that's when you'll want to get into you know reverting commits, which I'll show you later, or you might want to do a new commit. But if you haven't, if you're doing everything locally, amending the last commit is no big deal. You can just amend it and you know right now you know I haven't pushed this out anywhere. I could go back and say, "You know what? I didn't want to, you know, add any of those last two lines. I I just wanted to do this one and commit that." So now if I close this and go to get k, that last commit right now is just going to have you know, six, because I didn't commit the other lines. I changed that commit. Now, every time you change a commit, it changes the SHA number. It, you remember, as I said earlier, that all of these are unique. So they're also, they're, you know, they're unique caches of the commit. So if the commit changes, so does the SHA number. So, you know, this gives you kind of accountability. So if, you know, someone corrupted your uh, repository, you would know that someone changed a commit because it wouldn't have the same shot. And Git knows this right away. And if something's wrong, it'll raise a red flag and say, no, 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 there's corruption in this repository. And you'll know right away that something bad has happened. And you might have to, you know, get a backup or something of that sort. But, you know, that that's, you know, one of the nice things about Git. Also, as you notice that I have uncommitted changes, it shows those to me too in get k, which I didn't really mention in the last commit. But so we'll go back to get GUI now. Um, oops, get space GUI actually. So there's more here than you know. You know, I showed you the basics, which you know those are you know very useful. There's actually uh, other things, which is uh, stage hong show, which uh, Basically, get will show you the differences in what it calls hunks. I don't usually mess around with staging hunks or you know things like that. I usually stage particular lines or just stage the whole file. Uh, depends on what I'm doing, uh, but you can have it show more context, less context. You can refresh, you know, do a whole bunch of things. Uh, there's some options here that you can set as well, um, which actually you can get to those. Oops, come back. You can get to those in, I believe, under the edit menu as well. There's also, uh, you know, other commands, which I'm going to show you these on the command line. But, you know, you can do branching. Uh, these are, you know, some of the commits. Uh, stage to commit is like the, you know, there's a, a key for this. So actually, if I had multiple files, I could select those using control and do control T and stage a whole bunch of files at once. Uh, you know, unstage is control U. So, you know, there are some quick keys. There's merge, which I, I've never used this. I, I don't really use this particular you know, file for that. I do all my merging from the command line, but you know, you can do some local merging here and whatnot. Um, remotes. I haven't really talked too much about remotes, but uh, you can add remotes as like uh, it, it's pretty much just like you know your remote repository that you might push to or pull from, and uh, you can actually add those named remotes here. I usually, when I'm pushing and pulling, I specify, you know, the whole entire thing. But that's just me paranoia, and I'll I'll talk I'll show more about that in you know a later uh, video. So there's also tools which can be very nice. Um, 
this is, you know, you see all these tools, which these are tools I actually made, and all these are, are just commands. And so like uh, stat, which if I click this, it basically runs a get status and just shows it to me in a window. Now, I clicked off. Go back. So, and basically, you know, you've seen these actual commands in the config, but I didn't actually write those commands, uh, you know, in the config. I use the add right here, and it gives you, you know, a way to add. So you can, you know, go here and say, you know, I'll make a new status. And let's see, show a dialog before running. Sure. Um, ask commuter for additional arguments. You can ask them for additional arguments, which will go in an args variable. Uh, we just want to run a get st, and you can add it globally or just be local to this repository. That's something I haven't really talked about, but when I showed you that get metadata, um, it also has a get config in it for you know, you can add things locally or to your, you know, global, which was uh, that get config that's in your home directory. I usually, you know, when I'm adding commands, I add them to the, you know, global anyways. But there's, you know, other things that you can do in this tool, like uh, you can run only uh, if a diff is selected. So if, you know, you want to run it on a particular file, um, you know, there's there's a lot of things you can do. So, you know, I'm adding that. And I don't know why it goes off there like that, but anyways. Um, so now we have the new status. If I click on that, it asks me if I'm sure I want to run this because I selected that option. I click yes, and it runs my get status and pops the result up in a window. So go back. So that's pretty much uh, Git GUI. Um, and actually, well, there's also a repository. So let's show you some of this. Uh, explore working file. So that actually, you know, brings up the file directory of your working directory. Um, you see these little icons. I'll talk more about that later. That's uh, Rabbit VCS working there, but that's in for another tutorial. Let's see. Visualize master's history. Visualize all branches. I believe that just brings up get k um, database statistics compressed. Oh, that's another thing to mention about get is uh, in the background it has uh, its own uh, database which it doesn't automatically compress it, but it's uh, you know it keeps things around and usually get GUI will every once in a while you know come up and say. Uh, especially on Windows for some reason. I, I don't think it does this as much on Linux, but it'll say that, you know, the repository has this many loose objects. Do you want to, you know, run, I, I don't know if it calls it compress or if it calls it something up or clean up or something like that. But, you know, it gives you the option, you know, on startup of get GUI. Uh, and basically from here, you can just run that and it'll actually you know, do that. I didn't really have that much outstanding, so it was really quick. Uh, on Windows, that seems to take a little bit more time than it does on Linux. Um, but that's pretty much it, and that's pretty much Git GUI, and it's another very useful uh, program. I'd say get to l learn, you know, this and, you know, how it works and whatnot, play around with it uh, on like a test repository before you go, you know, testing it out on, you know, a production repository, but, you know, play around with it. And, uh, you know, this is just something that will help you out a lot uh, in using Git, you know, rather than doing everything from the command line. So that's pretty much all for now.